Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Delilah Spiritual Spot. I'm Delilah Rose and I want to talk about setbacks and how I get through them, um, what causes them for me. So I'm going to use myself as an example. Um, and this is about spirituality um, and trying to stay positive and moving in a positive energy. Now I have to admit it's very difficult for me to be positive. Is something that I have to work on all the all the time every day is me trying to stay on a positive track um, I live in New York City which is very stressful um, it's very expensive you know trying to make the ends meet and uh, trying to follow my dream I'm an empty nester so I'm 47 years old um, my daughter, I just have one, she's 23. And so I am using this time to follow my dreams with this podcast and YouTube channel and, you know, trying to find the time, um, working full time, you know, um, is difficult, you know, it's difficult. Um, but I, I, cannot express the happiness it brings me to do, to do this, even if it's one person listening, even if no one listens, and this is just a record of my craziness for my daughter, um, I love that. I love that. And you know, when I sing record of craziness, it's because I seem to be all over the place on these podcasts because... Um, I like talking about stuff. I like talking about tarot cards always with my tarot hearts goes, but I also like talking about archangels. Um, I haven't talked about it, but I like talking about aliens. I like talking about Egyptians. I like talking about the Vikings, you know? Um, and so, and so my podcast is finding its way and it just may be this mish of of things that excite me, things that make me happy, but also things that are important to my spirituality. Uh, when I talk about the Vikings, you know, they have a, their own significant uh, spiritual practice um, with Valhalla and Odin. Um, and what people don't realize is that we can tie in all these gods and goddesses um, to the archangels. Right, we have archangels that represent the exact same things, um, with similar stories. We can tie this into the Orisha, um, if we're talking about the, the Yoruba religion, um, Santeria. You know, we can tie all these things together, um, and I think that I try to I try to find the commonality in things um, in my spirituality because I like it all. It all makes sense to me. So I am a student of history and religion um, and I have my own spiritual gifts uh, that I am still, even at this day and age, trying to figure out. They grow. Um, sometimes I feel like they're not, it's not as strong as it used to be, but that's normally when I'm not feeling well. Um, because I do have some health issues. And so like when uh, I have an autoimmune disease, so when I have a flare up, I, I find that I can't tap into that energy, but that makes sense because I'm weakened physically. Um, but it doesn't make it less any infuriating. Um, and sometimes I feel like that's a step back because it takes away from my spiritual growth. But I wanna talk in, talk in particular about triggers. Right. So for me, um, I have a tough background. You know, I'm not shy in saying that you had, you know, I dealt with an abusive father, a father who was um, unfortunately on drugs. Um, and, you know, it was a difficult time growing up, you know. Um, you know, my mother did the best she can or she could. Uh, you know, she, she wasn't without fault, fault and I don't blame her. You know, sometimes she had a little bit too much to drink. 
um, she didn't take care of her health as well as I liked. Um, but I kind of understand why she didn't. Um, because she was dealing with her own issues, uh, moving past the abuse and her own spirituality. And, you know, and this is not about that, but, um, I think it's important to understand that I have triggers and this is where it stems from. If you don't listen to the previous podcast, I'm just setting the stage of what my triggers might be. So you can imagine I'm one of five children. We all have issues with anger. We were taught that if you were angry, you hit. Um, that's very difficult. It's a difficult habit to get out of, especially when you're dealing with all these anger issues from the abuse. Um, and I have triggers even to this day. Now my dad's been gone since I was 12 and my mom's been gone since I was 24. Uh, but some things still trigger me. It still brings me back to that little kid who you know, when she's angry or scared, was taught to strike out, right? That's, that doesn't work in the modern world. You just can't go around hitting people. Even in New York, you can't go around hitting people. Um, and so recently something happened um, with some close family members, uh, and I won't say what the situation is, but I, it made me angry. It made me angry, and because I've I haven't I haven't gotten physical with someone in well over twenty years. Um, well, that's not the exact truth. I'll be perfectly honest with you. That's not the exact truth, but it's it's been many many years. Um, so I had something recently that made me angry. So now instead of what I taught myself to do, instead of And this was many years ago that I taught myself to do this. After I had my daughter, instead of lashing out, I internalize. So I internalize my anger. And instead of addressing it, I used to avoid confrontation because I was afraid of, I was afraid of my temper, right? I was afraid of if I even address something where was that going to lead to? Because I'm thinking 12 steps ahead and, you know, things may not even escalate to that. Uh, and so how this affects me spiritually, it's because it's a lesson that um, I had to learn over and over and over again. And even though I was connected spiritually, you know, this, this was a big burden on me. Still is a big burden on me, you know, um, not to so much wanting to hit people because I, I don't, but that self punishment, that is, that is something that I still do, right? I'm still very hard on myself and I still think about it, you know, and it just swims in my mind for a long time when I do something that I feel is an error or I internalize something. And so how, again, that affects me spiritually is like, how many times am I going to go through this? Why haven't I gotten past this? Even though I've grown spiritually, um, it feels like this is just one burden that's difficult. Uh, So recently I started to think about things and this is why journaling is so important. It's because I'm not even angry for myself. And so here's the thing for me, and this is something that just came in like an epiphany. Um, I kind of, I, I came to the epiphany before, but I really never understood why um and it's because of my spirituality my spirituality is a cause and effect because i i feel like i'm meant to help and i'm meant to heal and so i took on the burden let's say for my mother since my mother's passed on of when things happen with her children or in our family i'm angry for her 
And I'm like, I'm angry for her. She's not here. She's living her best life ever. She's in spirit. You know, she may be back here on earth, reincarnated. I'm not sure about that. You know, they haven't given me that information. Um, but I know she's in spirit and she's happy and she's living her best spiritual life ever. And she's not worried or concerned about these things. These things no longer harm her. Right? But I'm still worried about how she would feel or how she feels. And I'm thinking about it in the earthly plane because I also want to fix it. And so here is, here is a big, a big thing for me to understand that, that I still want to fix it for her. And I want to fix it because I'm supposed to be the spiritualist and the healer. But that wasn't my job. I'm her child. And plus, I was way younger. And so when you come to these epiphanies, and again, this is why journaling and doing shadow work is so important, is that I understood that I was angry for her. I didn't understand that I was trying to fix her too. Or I was trying to fix it for her. Like I can't parent my siblings and I can't put the expectations my mother had for them on them or the expectations my mother had for me on me. I have to live my own life. They have to live their own life. You know, my mother, even though she died at 57, had a full life, you know, And it, it just amazes me even talking about it right now, how much time I wasted um, trying to fix things that are really not in my control. You can only help people who want to be helped. You can only heal people who want to be healed. And that's it. I can't force it. I can't go back in time and make things right and trust me it makes me sick just even talking about this because it it's, it it upsets me uh because for some reason i feel like i am my mother's protector but not only her i feel like that with my siblings i'm their protector like everyone could always count on me to be their mouthpiece because before I was very spicy with the mouth, you know, again, I'm a New Yorker, I'm Puerto Rican, it is what it is. And so when people didn't have the strength or ability to speak up for themselves, here I was taking on the challenge. But what's interesting is, is that I was taking up the challenge for others, but I was muted addressing my own hurts and pains. And I don't know and I just don't know if I was using my ability to help and protect to shield myself from dealing with what was festering inside of me. And so I've made the very conscious effort to release. And this is what we talk about releasing spiritually. You can do all the rituals. I can write it on a piece of paper and I can burn it and send it off to the wind. But if I'm not understanding the whys and the how, and I'm not doing that really introverted look within to understand, right? Because you may not, you may know what's going on. You may not understand it and you may not know how to put a name to it. And so this is why we take steps back because something happens it puts us in a place of where we used to be so we can't see where we were. And again, this is where journaling comes in. 
because jur through journaling, I can go back and look to see the steps and the strides I made in my spiritual and emotional journey of healing. And so I understand that this is not setting me 10 paces back. This little hiccup actually helped. This last little hiccup actually woke me up and helped me to understand what one of the major issues is for me. And so I don't want you to look at these triggers as a setback. I want you to look at these triggers as a catalyst that can propel you forward. Because it took me how long? Again, I'm 47. My mother died when I was 23, 24. I had my daughter at 23. My mother died when I was 24. My father died when I was 12. It took me how long to understand that right now? And it's through me following my dreams and pushing my spirituality, not on people, but pushing the limits of my own spirituality for me to uncover this that I couldn't even uncover in therapy. But I just uncovered it now. And so I wanted to jump on and share this. This is very raw for me. As you can see, this is not uh, prepared. This is just me jumping on and talking. Um, but I hope that you can take this and make some sense of it in your own life. You know, we all go through different things. Some of us go through similar things. But instead of thinking things as a setback, use those setbacks and those triggers to propel you forward. Um, again, if you can, journal. It's very important to your growth. Um, unless you have some type of photographic memory where you have total recall, then you, know, you don't need to journal, but us mortals. <laughs> Um, sometimes need to write these things out. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this makes sense for someone. I'm Delilah Rose and this is Delilah Spiritual Spot.